Good morning, Taurus. E. Ray Taronic here, um, Master Reaver of Mystery Suspense Thrillers, as well as Broadcaster of Astrology. I am here to go over your monthly astrology with you, as well as the major transits. Now, the major transits will be seen here in the video. They will not be in the newsletter anymore. The horoscope portion, however, will be in the newsletter. So um, you can look for that to come out uh, at the beginning of the month, at the beginning of February. Um, happy Martin Luther King Day, by the way. I'm shooting this on uh, Martin Luther King Day. I'm off of work today, so I'm doing my other work. <laughs> um, first, I'd like to ask you guys to please help me grow by liking the video and subscribing to the channel so that you can uh, get these videos to help you navigate your month, your health your destiny, your career, um, your everyday life. Um, it definitely helps. Now, so please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you do not know, uh, first let me say, if you don't know the positions in your natal chart, I would advise you to go to cafenatalastrology.com and get your natal chart done. It's free. All you need is the information off of your birth certificate, which is your time of birth, your date of birth, and your place of birth, and of course your name. Okay, that will really, really help a lot because when you watch these videos, you're going to want to watch for your rising sign, your moon sign, your sun sign, and whichever sign affects your career sector. That's what I do anyway. I look at all, uh, all four of those signs so that I can have a complete picture of my month and how it is going to go. Now, uh, let's get into your astrology or let's get into the major transits. Now, I've ha I have my notes here, so um, I won't be looking at you the entire time. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, I have notes everywhere. Um <laughs> My writing is horrible, but <laughs> you know, it's the way I do it. I like, I'm old school. So um, that's the way I do it. Uh, if you'd like to hear or know more about me, as far as my writing, you can go below and um, click on one of those links. I believe my Amazon link is down there. And also uh, my Instagram link is below. Um, if you go to the about section in the video, all of my social media links are there as well for the channel, with um, logged with the channel. So anyway, let's get into Aquarius season. This computer so I can see better the light. It's Aquarius season, okay? So Aquarius season ranges from January 20th to February the 18th. The fixed air sign of Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, the planet of freedom, revolutionary progress, visions, originality, science, um, among other things. Aquarians are inquisitive and, you know, they have a knack for intellectual conversation, um, but they can also be unpredictable, hence being ruled by Uranus. So expect some surprises this go around, some shocks or surprises. They don't have to be bad. Good ones, good ones as well. Um, so let's all channel our inner Aquarius this season by exerting our independence, being original, bold, brilliant, increasing our humanitarian efforts at this time would be wonderful, um, with all of the terrible things that are going on in the world and the lack of empathy being shown. Um, we need that. We need that compassion. It's really disheartening to see some of the things that are going on. Um, but we'll keep it positive. Um, we'll say, uh, let's say um, Aquarius season reminds us to be more social, to show our friends how eclectic we can be. Now, while you're out there networking, make sure that you network with people that will open you up to new places, ideas, things, other people. Um, Aquarius is all about the experience. Just make sure that it's a positive experience. Um, by the way, happy Martin Luther King Day since I am shooting this video on Martin Luther King Day. I'm off of work today. Um, I don't think I said that already. If I did, 
You got a double shot out. There you go. <laughs> okay, so Uranus ended its retrograde um, in August. No, on January 11th. On January 11th, I'm sorry. Um, ushering in progress in those areas of your chart where Uranus is situated. Okay. And Uranus in Taurus reigns over your values, your money, your resources, which are all now free to progress now that the retrograde, Uranus retrograde has ended. Um, it's currently toggling between like two and six degrees. So um, in May, uh, your season, it actually goes past the six degree mark. But before that, um, it's staying in between two and six degrees. So any planets you have in Taurus at, uh, between two and six degrees, you'll experience major changes and shifts. Um, in addition to that, there's an opposition to the Capricorn, uh, Cancer, and Libra. So if you have any houses ruled by those signs, Cancer, Capricorn, or Libra, between two and six degrees, you'll feel those shifts as well. If you go to cafenatalastrology.com and get your natal chart, you can find that out. It tells you what degrees those signs are in. Okay. Um, the sun is in Aquarius until February 19th, shining a light on whatever houses you have in Aquarius. On the 19th, it goes into uh, Pisces. So it'll uh, affect the houses you have in, in those areas. Um, so you're going from being uh, open and free thinking to being emotional, um, possibly, quite possibly. Um, Mercury, the planet of communication and skills, leaves the sign of Capricorn to move into Aquarius on February, uh, Friday, no, I'm sorry, on Friday, January 31st. And it'll stay there until February the 3rd. Okay, so you'll be in that uh, objective free thinking sign um, until then. On the 3rd, that's when it goes into deep, dreamy, emotional Pisces. Okay, so... The retrograde in Aquarius and Pisces at 12 degrees on February the 17th through March the 10th can stir up communication brought out by insecurities, okay? So I want you guys to be honest with yourself, Taurus. Um, try not to project your insecurities onto others and don't let others project their insecurities onto you, okay? Um, in addition to that, Try not to sign any contracts during the retrograde. I, I warn against signing contracts during the retrograde. I don't do it. If you have to, read the fine print. You know, after the retrograde, you'll have a bigger picture. You'll have the whole complete picture. And with Pisces in there, it's, it's emotional. It's more um, not about fact, you know. So you want to wait until after work to move forward with your projects. You know, launch after the retrograde if you can. Um, and when I say retrograde, I had one of my coworkers. She said, Ebony, you know, a lot of the people that you are that are watching you don't may not know about their their horoscopes or their astrology. So can you explain a little more when you're going through these things? OK, so when I say retrograde, a planet is retrograde. It just means that the planet it's turned around. It's not moving backwards. It just creates the kind of the illusion that it is. But it's going back over things. It's revisiting things. So exes might pop up, people from your past, um, decisions that have that you've made in the past uh, may need to be revisited. Work that you submitted may need to be redone, or reworked, revised. So retrograde is all about the do-over. The go go back and um, check things through. That's why you don't want to be submitting things during the retrograde or, um, you know, jumping into things during the retrograde because you'll get more information afterward. Okay, so now let's move on to Venus. I'm sorry, guys. Planet of uh, love and pleasure. Um, romance. It enters the cardinal fire sign of Aries at zero degrees on February 7th. It stays in Aries until March the 4th. So this is 
energy that's going to last the entire month, okay? So love can ignite during this fiery competitive sign, ushering in a renewed sense of passion. Um, so, so I know some people's relationships are needing that renewed sense of passion. Um, just make sure you don't get too emotional. That, that uh, Pisces new moon can bring about a stir of emotions. Speaking of which, during the new moon on February the 23rd, it squares Jupiter and Capricorn. So be on the lookout for temporary changes in your relationships. And when I say relationships, I mean relationships across the board, whether it be romance, friendships, co-workers, peers, relationships across the board. Um, keep a cool head and think things through, but be honest with yourself and others. Venus also deals with your finances. Be honest with yourself about your finances. If you need to go back and you need to rework some things, the retrograde is the perfect time to go back and do that before it's time to move forward, okay? Mars, the planet of challenges and energy. It leaves Sagittarius entering the Earth sign of Capricorn at zero degrees on February 16th until the end of March. Um, You'll strive to accomplish lofty goals during this time because you're feeling up for the challenge, um, especially fire signs in those areas that are ruled by fire energy. Um, having a strategy and practicing patience will bode well for you now. Money is your motivation and your ambition is hungry during this time. Now's the time to realize the legacy you plan to leave. All, all year, it's that time. With that Pluto and Saturn conjunct with Capricorn, it's all about drive. You know, you're trying to get somewhere in life. You're trying to see where you're going to be. What's your destiny? How can you work it? Okay, so just ward against being ruthless. Nobody likes a tyrant. Don't be ruthless. Maintain self-control. Treat people how you want to be treated. Remember that. That's important. That's something we're lacking right now in the world and something we need more of. Compassion. As opposed to seeking revenge, just glow up. Period. Be better, not bitter. You don't have to uh, involve yourself in the lower vibrational energy, especially if people are arguing at work and things like that. You know, be the bigger person. Don't get off into that. You don't have time for it. Okay. Jupiter, the planet of luck and expansion, entered Capricorn on December the 2nd, 2019, remaining there until December the 18th of 2020. Okay. This is a time when you can acquire wealth or even a social status or material status. But you have to ask yourself, did you put in the work during previous transits? It's time to reap the rewards. Reaping what you sow can be beneficial if you put in the work. If you didn't, you can't expect to get any rewards if you didn't do anything to uh, grant said reward. On February 20th, Jupiter is sextile Uranus, aspecting Pisces and Capricorn. So inspiration can be blooming at this time because Neptune rules illusions, delusions, inspirations and uh, dreams. So um, those areas will be a focus during that uh, square, or not during that square, I'm sorry, during that sextile. <laughs> um, and by the way, sextile is uh, when two planets are uh, uh, 60 degrees apart, forming a harmonious uh, angle or a favorable aspect. So it's a good thing when things are sextile. Of course. Now, Saturn, the planet of responsibilities, restriction, even uh, reality, um, has been affecting our plant, uh, affecting us for the past couple of years in a certain area of our chart. Now, um, with that being said, Jupiter's there now, so it'll create ease in those areas, making it easier for you to move forward. If you don't know how. It affects your chart. Um, you can go back to the December newsletter. In the December newsletter, I have that in there for each sign. Or you can just go back to the very first video I did. It was like 33 minutes or something like that. 
at the beginning when I'm going through the transits, when I get to Jupiter, I let you know how it affects every sign in that video. If you want to go back, you can do that. Now, for um, this month, we have two moons, full moon and new moon. The full moon, the full snow moon on February 9th is in the fixed fire sign of Leo. So here's looking at you, Leo. Um, the Native Americans actually call this moon the hunger moon or the storm moon. But Leo, um, it's going to be uh, focused on Leo uh, at that time in any houses, tours that you have um, in Leo. Um, the new moon on February 23rd is in the mutable water sign of Pisces. So any signs you have uh, or houses you have ruled by Pisces can be a focus during that time. Get your natal chart. It's free, like I said. So let's get into your astrology for the month, Taurus, now that we've gone over the major transits. Taurus, which ranges from April 20th through May 20th, February finds your focus on wealth, status, legacy, because of the sun aspecting your 10th house, which is your career sector, for uh, the first two weeks. As a matter of fact, Taurus, your career is ruled by Aquarius. Okay, so you want to look at the Aquarius video and look at what's going on with their career because that applies to you. Okay, so it moves um, to your 11th house of hopes, friendships, goals, high hopes. So put in the work, maintain a positive attitude to usher in new blessings. Taurus has really been going through it. Um, they had a time. I know a lot of Tauruses, I know that, that have had a time, especially ones that are struggling to um, let go of toxic vices, people, places, or things. You know, they, they've really been having a time. The universe is calling for us to let those things go if we choose to progress. That's part of being enlightened, is being honest with yourself and knowing when you need to let go of things, what you need to stop so that you can move forward and, and, and not be your own demise, okay? Resonating with the change you wish to bring about is of the utmost importance, Taurus. The change you want, not the change your family wants, not what's expected of you, what you want. You have to make your own way. It's your life to live, not others, okay? There's definitely more work to be done Definitely, and you know that. You know there's more work to be done. Um, so make a list. I want you to make a list of, you know, the things that you need to change, the things that you want to change as well. And then next to that, I want you to write down the things that you're going to do to implement said change, to manifest that change, to bring that change about. It's about having a plan this year. If you have a plan, you can work your plan and your plan will pan out. You know, it, it, it will, it's, it's the odds of it panning out are, are better than you just running out there and doing willy nilly and not even knowing why you're doing it. You must keep pushing to exert your independence. Just don't spread yourself too thin Set aside some time for you to relax because Taurus, you know you need to have your relaxation time. You know, if you're only getting a little bit of relaxation time, you tend to stray away to toxic vices in order to uh, fulfill what you're lacking. Um, the Mercury retrograde, you know, Mercury is uh, the planet of skills and communication. Skills and communication. With it, with it going retrograde, February 17th, it has you second-guessing and revisiting your plans, okay? The retrograde ends on March 10th, but energies can be felt, like I said, up to two weeks after, or I would just say up to a week after and a week before. You'll start feeling that already. It's uh, called a shadow period. This retrograde for you is a time for relationships, and they can be tested, especially around that moon on the 23rd, that Pisces emotional moon. Relationships can be tested. 
old friends can call you to get in contact with you. So expect um, some, some, some things coming your way this month, okay? Um, that's why we go over all these things. So we're looking at career this month. Um, we're looking at balancing our relationships, our give and take, our emotions. All of those things are a focus this month for you, okay? So thank you for your time. I hope you like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next month. Thank you, Taurus. Bye.